Good afternoon, students. This is our third day of the Memorial Day Intensive First Academy SAT Intensive Review. Uh, we concentrated on some areas regarding essay writing, vocabulary, critical reading, etc. I'd like to speak a little bit about the essays that you know, this, uh, is, this is a test that takes you basically, you know, anywhere from six months to a year to prepare. And cramming, you know, it's, it's skills that are required over a long period of time. Cramming isn't really particularly helpful. What I recommend that you do the, night, the day or the night before the test, get some mild exercise, get a good night's sleep, good breakfast, okay, wake up. And I also recommend that you kickstart your brain the morning of. What do I mean like that? Don't let the first time. <laughs> okay. So, what, do you know raconteurs? Um, I, well, I just, like, my mother is like, covering the answer and I, like filling in. So right. I kind of thought it was like a storyteller. It's a storyteller, but it's like a very witty storyteller. Imagine that after you guys get your degrees, and you're all doctors and engineers and lawyers, multimillionaires, you're invited to a cocktail party in Manhattan, okay, overlooking Central Park. Okay, and it's very elegant, with dressed men and women, whatever. And somebody there is a storyteller, telling stories about adventures from around the world and different witty things that happen to him, whatever. Like an Oscar Wilde type. It's a raconteur, like a very sophisticated storyteller. And that's what it is. A sophisticated storyteller. Um, Bene is good. Benny's good from the Latin root. I like that. And what's a, what's diction in this context? It's a choice of words. Well, good speech. Okay, so it means a prayer. Benediction is a prayer. Okay, now, good. Benny is good in the Latin root, and we've done this all the time, but the Greek root for good is EU. So if you see eulogy, okay, euthanasia, this is good from the Greek. Okay, euthanasia, which literally means the good death, okay? Eulogy, Eugene, he's got good genes, Eugene. I don't know if he does, do you guys know Eugene? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Very good, good genes, okay. Um, Eureka, Eureka, which actually translates into I found it, but I, I found the good thing. Eureka, but this is an important word, because you'll see this, okay? You'll see this and you'll see this. Benny is the good in Latin. Okay, but he, and there he does have hope regarding Henry beyond afternoon too. After all, look, the family went through an economic downturn. This is a rich family who is still kind of accepting them that, you know, we're kind of equals, even though you guys don't have any more money. And if she could somehow, <laughs> and it's all unspoken, all inference, meet Henry, okay, meet him again, somehow hook up with him and marry him, and that was the whole thing in, in 19th century England, you know, marriage, keeping nobility and gentry together through it by way of marriage. She can actually rescue the family, but that's all unspoken. Is that the thing that he says the description about it? Okay, but the question, okay, good point. The question is what is implied? So it's an inference question. So we're not, that would be correct, Gene. You're absolutely 100% correct if, if they asked a detailed question, but they're actually asking um, an inference question. So what is inferred? The inference is what can, we can take fact A plus fact B and come to conclusion C. That's the definition of an inference question. We all clear with that? Okay, good. All right, so uh, Helen, how about the next one? Good. The social status of the Morrisons. Okay. Yeah. That that's clear. What's what was your thinking with this? Tell me your analysis. Um, well, tell me about process elimination. Well, yeah. Um, I definitely took out um, B and C. There's no intimidation in D, right? Yeah. This is all very friendly. Now look at the stateliness of the Morrison's home. This isn't about the Morrison's home. This is about Henry and the other characters. Mm -hmm. So A is the best answer. Process elimination can lead you there quite easily. Monica, how about 16? Well, all the recruits, all the following C. C, Mary is more beautiful than Isabel. It doesn't say one way or the other. Okay, Diana, what about 17? Uh, according to the passage, Mary Fletcher and Henry at the train station, it's in line 40. I hope everybody got that. Everybody got B? Yes. Okay, again, just the object lesson. Did you get it? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, just an object lesson. For detailed questions, guys, write yourself a note. You must go back. Don't trust your memory. Memory's a tricky thing. Write yourself a note. A detail like this, go back into the piece. You have about a minute on each one of these questions. It's plenty of time. Go back, dig it out. Don't be lazy, okay? And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Don't be lazy. There's no excuse to not get a detailed question. It's an open book test. Main idea is usually in the beginning, okay? Inference questions, fact A plus fact B equals conclusion C. You can write this down. Okay, an inference question is not a detail. It's the point that Gina just raised now. If the answer to an inference question is a detail that's mentioned in the piece, it's 99% of the time incorrect. Inference is your conclusion, and it'll be um, prefaced with terminology, as I said before. What does the author suggest? What would the author agree with? What could be inferred? what is suggested, what, can, what is implied. All those magic words are inference questions. Inference questions, please write this down, are not detailed questions. They are based on details. Fact A plus fact B equals conclusion C, and you have to make the conclusion. So it won't be, it won't be the answer to the fact. And as, we said, as I said before, Henry is a dashing